Hello and welcome back to Outmouse Labs. My name is Penny. In this video I'm going to be talking about the basics of plugin creation for RPG Maker MZ. This may turn into a series if it is something that folks have an interest in. Uh, there are definitely other plugin creation videos out there and I do highly recommend them. A uh, particular shout out to the Unpro Pro who I'll link to in the description below for helping me get started in making plugins. Um, However, most of the videos that are out there are either live streams or not really geared at beginners. So I'm hoping to help uh, folks who want to be able to pause and back up and mo may need to move a little slower. So with that, let's jump in. Okay, welcome back. Uh, I hope you liked the new intro for the channel. I am starting to make more videos and decided it was time to build a bit of a brand. Um, and this may be a good time to ask you to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. I would appreciate it very much. So here we are uh, back in the RPG Maker editor. Uh, the first thing that you are going to need is a code editor. I use VS Code or Visual Studio Code. I will link to the download page below in case you need it. Uh, once it is installed, the following procedure should just work for you. If you're using another code editor, that is absolutely fine. Just navigate to the plugins folder in your editor of choice uh, and in a similar manner. All right, so we're going to start by going to game open folder. So that's game open folder. And then we're going to go into our JS folder. I'm going to right click, show more options and open with code. Okay, so this is opening Visual Studio Code. And we're seeing, um, well, when you open it, it might look like this. So these are the RPG Maker MZ base code uh, uh, JavaScript files. And then here's where all our plugins will go. The plugin, your list may look different. It may be empty. You may have a lot more plugins. Um, for this, what you're going to want to do is right click on plugins and select new file. And then name it whatever you like, as long as it ends with .js. I'm going to be using learning.js for this tutorial. Okay, so um, the first four lines are JavaScript comments that allow a header at the top of the file. This is totally optional, but may help you or others know what file you are currently editing. So that's these first four lines here. The next several lines in green are a special version of the JavaScript doc strings comments that the MZ editor uses to construct the information in the plugin window and plugin command event. Let's go through them together. So we're going to start with at target MZ. So this line tells MZ that it is that this plugin is made for RPG Maker MZ, not MV. Without this, you may get a uh, warning in the plugin window that says this plugin may not be compatible with MZ. Um, the next thing here is plugin description. This is just a, uh, a line at the bottom of the plugin window that says what this is for. So this is used to teach plugin syntax for RPG Maker MZ. And then we have an author. This is going to fill in the author window in the plugin window. Uh, next up, we have at command. So this creates a command, a plugin command, which can be accessed on the third window of the event page. We're going to get to more of that. So the format here is at command space and then a name. So in this case, my command. The text is the text that's going to show on the command when you go into the plugin command window. The command you, when you click on the oh when you click on the menu, this is what it'll show. In this case, it's going to show greetings. The description is what will show up in the description window of the plugin command window. Next up is at arg. Um, so arg is short for arguments. You can have as many of these as you need. In this case, we're going to have two. So our, our so same format at arg space and then the name of the argument. In this case, who greet. Uh, so it's traditional to use this uh, camel case, which is a lowercase first word and uppercase every word thereafter. You don't have to use that, but that is the convention in JavaScript. Next is at text, same as above. So the text it's going to show. And, um, the description, once again, the description that will show in the window in the editor. At type is new, so at type, space, and then a type. There are several types. In this case, we're using text. Other types include things like array or number. Uh, you can look those up in the RPG Maker MZ documentation if you need to know more types, or I may include that in future videos. And then at default is the value that's going to be put into the argument if not if the user doesn't change it so we have penny here 
This is another argument. It's exactly the same. Who's going to be the speaker, the text, the description, the type is once again text, and the default in this case is read. Next up we have at param, which is new. So parameters are what's in the plugin window that the user changes to customize the plugin. Uh, we aren't actually going to use this parameter, but I did include it for an example. So this parameter is lucky number. Its text is lucky number. That's what's going to show in the editor. The description is your lucky number. The type is again text and the default I went with seven. Next up, we have at help. Anything below at help but above the star slash is going to show up in the plugin managers, uh, the plugin windows uh, help window, which is the bottom left, the largest window. It does have a character limit that is right around 80 characters, so about this long. You might have to experiment a little bit um, because sometimes you're going to overshoot and it'll just cut it off. The only thing included in my help file is this uh, guide for about how long a comment can be and then the license for this plugin which is MIT. Meaning you're welcome to use it, change it, do whatever you'd like with it. Okay so now that we're done telling the editor how to display our plugin we're going to get to the code itself. So the first line after the green um, is a constant which means it's declaring a constant which is a type of information holder in JavaScript and we're going to name that outmouse underscore learning. So the reason we're doing this and you'll notice over here in the plugin name uh, in my JS file it's similar is by naming things with the handle you use as a coder plus the name of the specific plugin it's very unlikely that someone else will use that exact same name when two people use the same name for the boxes essentially that hold the data, it can cause conflicts and make both plugins break. So the convention in the RPG Maker community for a long time has been your handle underscore name of the plugin. And your handle is typically all caps. If you look here from Casper Gaming, uh, CGMZ Core has the same format. So, all right, so const outmouse underscore learning and this equals curly brackets means it's an object. Think of an object like a box that holds all of your data. Um, we're going to have the object, which is the big box, and we're going to put a bunch of little boxes in it. And that should make more sense shortly. Uh, this next line is creating our first little box. So outmouse underscore learning, which is the same as up here, means Put, take this box and put the, the littler box plugin name inside of it. Plugin name holds a string, which is a uh, collection of alphanumeric characters uh, that you use to make words and messages. They always have quotes around them, and in my color scheme, they're going to turn this this uh, rust color. So just to go over that one more time, we create a box called Outmouse Learning. And then we create another box called plugin name and we put it in the first box. And inside of the plugin name box, we put the string out mouse learning. And again, we're doing this so that our data is protected and doesn't interfere with someone else's. Okay, next up, these two line, these two uh, slashes, just like up at the top, means that it's a comment. So the compiler and RPG Maker will ignore this comment. Then once again, we are saying, here's our big box. We want to make a smaller box called parameters. Um, and we do that by putting dot, which basically means put in here. And plugin manager dot parameters. So this is our first bit of code from RPG Maker. And the plugin manager is part of RPG Maker MZ, and it's used to create plugins and plugin commands. Um, you don't have to make this yourself. It would be probably hundreds or even thousands of lines of code. And you can learn all about this on the RPG Maker MZ docs. So for now, what we need to know is we're asking RPG Maker's plugin manager to assign to find all of our parameters up here in the green part and put them in our box. In this case, and the reason we know it's going in our box is because we've created our box and created our plugin name. So what this does is it replace, you can think of it as this becomes this. 
And yes, you could just put this directly here, but by doing it this way, you're protecting your data. Okay, next up, same thing once again. We are taking our big box, we're creating a smaller box called lucky number. We're saying that it's a string, which is the collection of alphanumeric characters. And we're saying that it is in our parameters box under the name. So the brackets here means key um, or like the name it's registered under or seven. So either if the user creates a parameter or changes the parameter in the plugin window, it'll use that. Otherwise, it'll use the default, which is seven. One important thing, you see how this is rust colored with parentheses, or excuse me, uh, rust colored with quotes. That means this is a string, which means you couldn't do math with it. It's not the number seven. If you wanted it to be a number, you'd have to change up here the type to number, and then you would write this seven without the parentheses, or excuse me, the quotes. Goodness. All right. So last but not least so this everything up to this point we have simply assigned everything to the editor and then given all of our editor pieces data or values now we're going to ask rpg maker to make a command out of it so we do this again by using the plugin manager and register command it takes the name of our plugin which is here um and uh, it takes the name of our plugin and the name of the command, which the name of the command would match whatever you put up here. So my command, my command, and notice it's a string. Once you have said what the command is, you have to tell RPG Maker what you want to do with it. We use we do this with a function. A function is kind of like a miniature program. This is our function. So to declare a function in JavaScript, you start with two parentheses um, and you put the word args in between them for the plugin manager. Args, again, short for arguments, is grabbing all those arguments from the green part up top. So we're saying create a mini program or function that has access to the args from up top. And then what we want the function to do, so the equals arrow means do this. And so everything in between the brackets it's going to do. Console.log uh, with parentheses args means it's going to show all of the arguments in the console, which I'll show you in a minute. The out of mouse underscore learning uh, dot name being greeted is the you know assigning the value of our argument up top. It, again, it's a string, and it's either going to use what the user puts in or it's going to use the default penny. Same thing, name of speaker, it's going to use whatever the user puts in or the default read. And then we're going to use a bit of RPG Maker code, get dollar sign game message. Whenever you see a dollar sign, you know that it's a global variable. And in RPG Maker, you know that it's part of the RPG Maker base code. So and there's that camel case, lowercase, and then uppercase for the second word. So dollar sign game message dot set speaker name so that speaker name is a method or a command parentheses and then the name of the speaker that we assigned so by default read or whatever the user puts and then we're going to do game message again because we're still using the game message code add dot add which is add to the screen and then this is what it actually shows up in the message window so we have this character which is on an American keyboard, it's called a tilde, um, and it's next, it's just to the left of the number one. Then we're gonna put, it creates a special string that allows us to put code in the middle of a string. So hello, notice it's rust colored, so it's a string. Then a dollar sign and a bracket. So everything in here is JavaScript code. So we're gonna include our, uh, our, our variable. Then we're going to close the bracket so it's back to being a string, rust colored exclamation point, and then a close tilde and a close parentheses. If you did everything like this, you should have a plugin. And when you hit save, if you're using Visual Studio Code, um, it will typically will tell you there'll be little red squiggles if something's wrong. I am going to include this file uh, as available to download so you can use it to tinker. 
I'm going to go to the top and scroll through it one more time just in case you need to pause. Remember, you can always pause, go back and look at this again. So I'm just going to slowly go through and then we're going to head back over into the editor. Okay. All right. So we're going to save that and close that. And we're back in the editor. Okay. So first thing we need to do is we need to enable our plugin. So we do that by going to the plugin manager, which is the puzzle piece. And I already have it enabled, but if you if I didn't, I'll go ahead and delete it. You would double click on a blank space, hit name. It's going to pull up every plugin in your plugins folder. In this case, we're using Outmouse Learning. It's going to show our help right here. So this is what was in our help uh, tags at the top in green. And then it's going to fill in stuff. It's going to fill in the author, which is again from our green tags, the help, and there's our parameter, lucky number, which we can change if we want. Um, we don't have to. It doesn't actually do anything in this case, but you're welcome to do so. Once your plugin is enabled, make sure that it's on. Hit OK. You'll see that it's there and it's on. Hit OK. Um, also, we want to point out, uh, so this here says the plugin SRD debug speed up may not support RPG Maker MZ. That's that warning I told you about because that plugin doesn't have the at, uh, at target RPG Maker flag in its green comments. Okay, so our plugin is now enabled. I'm going to go over to read. Um, and this is just a regular event uh, using read as the image. And it's set to same as character, action pressed. We're going to go to the third event page, very bottom, which is plugin command. You're going to have a plugin name. You're going to navigate to your plugin. You're going to see that help file again. Then there's our commands. This one only has one, but if you had more, there would be a whole list. And it's going to show whatever the text says, in our case, greetings. Then it's person to greet value of penny you can change that if you want it'll work whatever the user puts speaker read again it's going to work uh, regardless of what's in there it's all going to be considered a string and then our little help uh, show or our description excuse me shows a greeting based on person argument hit okay it's now there we hit apply we hit okay and we're good to play test it so i'm going to go ahead and hit play Uh, the window over here on the right is the console. I have it set to open automatically, but if you ever wanted to look at it, you can hit F8 and that will open up your console. A couple of other commands, just in case you were curious. If you hit F2, it's going to show you your FPS. Um, and if you hit F9 once you're in the game, it's going to give you all of your switches and variables. It's good to know about. Okay, so we go, we talk to read and Read has been filled in in the name box from our variable. Hello Penny has been filled in as the text and it pops up the window just like normal. So there you go. We used a plugin to show a message window. Admittedly, this is a somewhat trivial example, but this has everything that a complex plugin would have. There's an example of all of the pieces. From here, all you would really be doing is learning the RPG Maker MZ base code, using the documentation to take pieces of it and override it, that is make your own version that does what the original does plus extra pieces that you fill in. If you're interested in more coding tutorials, please let me know in the comments and I would be happy to like incrementally build more and more complex plugins this way so that you can learn how to do it. Um, once again, I hope this was helpful and I hope you have a good evening and happy game making everyone.